My presentation is about corrosion of additively manufactured stainless steel. Uh, nowadays, we all hear too much about additive manufacturing and how it is going to change the manufacturing industry and to replace the conventional manufacturing. The most advantage of this technology is to uh, produce three-dimensional complex geometries in a single step, which reduces the uh, both time and uh, cost of manufacturing. However, there are still some uh, barriers which hinder the widespread adoption of this technology to industry. And the most important barrier is the quality assurance of uh, the materials produced by this technology. So in this regard, uh, tonight I'm going to present some important aspects of uh, corrosion behavior of additively manufactured stainless steel. Initially, I would like to acknowledge my supervisors, Professor Mike Tan, Professor Tony Hughes, Professor Ian Gibson, and Associate Professor Wei Zhu. Let's start with a brief introduction of additive manufacturing and how it produces a material. So basically, there are different kinds of additive manufacturing technologies, uh, including powder bed, powder feed, and uh, uh, wire feed technologies. The technique I used in my research is the laser powder bed or selective laser melting technology. The principle of the technology is like this. Initially, a layer of powder material is deposited on the building plate, then the laser beams moves across the surface and melts the powder material at the specified regions based on the CAD model we already designed. Then the building plate moves downward and the fresh layer of powder is deposited on the building plate and this procedure repeats again and again until the complete part is produced. As you can see, this process produced the material in a layer open layer manner which gives us a high chance to have some defects like pores inside the material, which is highly dependent on the processing parameters like the laser power, laser scanning speed, or layer thickness. So we need to optimize these processing parameters to make sure we get a very high density material. In this regard, I have produced 27 different samples using different set of processing parameters, the four of which are shown in this slide. We used non-destructive X-ray computed tomography or CT experiments to visualize the internal structure of the material. These green numbers are in here are the density of the material. As you can see, sample A has a density of 96.9%. But it includes a very high number of the lack of fusion pores, these red features inside the material. So it means that the la laser energy density we applied in this technique is not uh, high enough to completely melt the powder material and to join the layers together. So with changing the processing parameters, we reach a density of 99.3% which is a high density, but still we have a many number of these lack of fusion pores, red features inside the material. With optimizing the processing parameters in sample C, we, we reach a very high density of 99.8%, but still we have a very few numbers of these lack of fusion pores inside the material. So the, the important thing is this sample C and sample D are produced exactly with the same energy density but a few changes in the processing parameters. You can see the sample D has a density of 99.5% without any lack of fusion pores or irregular shaped pores inside this material. Indeed, most of the pores inside the material are spherical, which are different from these regular shaped pores. Later on, I will show what would happen if we have these irregular shaped pores inside the material during the corrosion experiment. We use these high density materials for corrosion experiments. The first kind of corrosion I'm going to show you is the pitting corrosion resistance, which is a very common type of corrosion in industries. The most common technique to measure the pitting corrosion resistance of materials is doing the polarization measurements in which we apply an external anodic potential to the material and then measure the current density. The potential at which the, the current density starts to suddenly increase is called pitting potential. And when a material has a high pitting potential, it means it has a high resistance to uh, pitting corrosion. So as you can see, the additively manufactured sample in here has a pitting potential almost 250 millivolts higher than that of the conventional material, which means the actively manufactured material has a very high resistance to pitting corrosion. So the reason behind this behavior is the presence of some inclusions inside the material. Pitting corrosion usually starts at a very tiny regions of the material and then grows up. 
So these tiny regions in stainless steel usually are inclusions and most importantly, manganese support inclusions. As you can see, this inclusion is in here is a very small one with a few micrometer in dimensions and the tail of the inclusion is leaching manganese and sulfur. However, interestingly, for additively manufactured material, you couldn't find any trace of this detrimental manganese sulfide inclusions. Indeed, most of the inclusions are spherical in shape and enriched with oxygen, silicon, and manganese, and partly aluminum, which means they are basically oxide inclusions and, not, and are not prone to the peak in corrosion. So, the reason for this kind of different uh, inclusion formation is the solidification, high solidification rates associated with the additive manufacturing, which inhibits the formation of these manganese two-fold inclusions. Okay, this is uh, this high peak in corrosion resistance usually is true when we have a very high density material. Okay, let's see what would happen if we have those irregular shaped pores inside the material. For this purpose, we use the uh, three-dimensional X-ray computer to go of your CT experiments. This movie in here shows the sample before corrosion, and you can see there are a number of lack of fusion pores with different uh, colors inside the material. After uh, putting this sample or immersing this sample into a corrosive solution for almost one week, you could see a peak pit forms in, formed inside the material. If you uh, combine these two movies together to find the initiation point for the peak formation, you can see there is a peak just there is a pole just close to the external surface in here. If you look at this region from the top view, you could see the irregular shaped pole just close to the external surface, which acted as the initiation source for pitting. This again shows the importance of process optimization uh, to control the porosity of the material and to have these kinds of, as less as possible, these kinds of uh, lack of fusion pores. The other kind of corrosion I got to show you is the intergranular corrosion resistance. So this type of corrosion usually happens when you use the material at high temperatures. The summary of these measurements for intergranular corrosion resistance are shown in this inset here. Uh, it shows the degree of sensitization of the material, or DOS, based on the different samples. As you can see, the conventional material has a DOS value of 25%, but the additively manufactured sample at both transfers and building plate has a DOS value below 0.1%, which is much less than the uh, DOS value for the conventional material, showing the very high resistance of additively manufactured sample to intergranular corrosion. To get more information on the uh, intergranular corrosion resistance, we provided the cross-sectional images from the gray boundaries after corrosion test. For the conventional material, we could see the depths of the corrosion along the gray boundaries, for the conventional material, there's almost 10, 11 micrometers, but for the actively manufactured material, the depth of the corrosion is almost 1.3, 1.4 microns, which is much less than the conventional material. And again, it approves the high resistance of additively manufactured material to the intergranular corrosion. So the reason behind this kind of intergranular corrosion resistance backs to the uh, grain morphology and grain boundary character of the material. This EBSD maps in here shows that the additively manufactured material in both building plane and transverse, transverse plane has smaller grains compared to the conventional one, and also lots high density of uh, twin boundaries and low energy boundaries. These red lines in here shows twin boundaries and blue ones shows the low energy grain boundaries. So basically because the additively manufactured sample has high density of low energy grain boundaries and these type of grain boundaries are not susceptible to uh, intergranular corrosion. So, big, so the additively manufactured sample has very high resistance to intergranular corrosion. In summary, we see that the additively manufactured sample has a complex microstructure, including the pores, the grain morphology, grain boundary character, and inclusions, which all influence the corrosion behavior in different ways. So we see that uh, the AM material has high resistance to pitting corrosion and to intergranular corrosion resistance, which shows that the additive manufacturing has the potential to replace the conventional of manufacturing in industries requiring high resistance to corrosion. I should note here that there are still too many kinds of corrosion have not been investigated yet, 
uh, which necessitates the more research uh, in the future works. Thank you very much.